What do you want? And? Alright, alright, fine. I knew what you were talking about anyways. So, combat. My opinion, the best skill in Stardew Valley. But I know there are a lot of people who are scared of the Skull Cavern of the Mines, or just end up getting knocked out a lot, and I'm here to help. This guide will cover everything related to weapons, rings, boots, food, basically anything to help you stay alive. Alright, the way this video will go is I'll have chapters for the different sections of this video, so you can skip to whichever point you want. Or you can watch the whole video, because I plan to make it entertaining as well as informative. Before we get into the specific areas where you'll be encountering monsters, we need to talk about what you'll need to defend yourself and how you're going to heal. Since it's probably near impossible to never take damage in your history of playing Stardew Valley, I mean everybody's a beginner at some point, there are three different types of weapons in Stardew Valley. Not including slingshots because who uses those for damage on a regular basis. There are swords, hammers, and daggers. Every weapon has different weapon stats and I won't go into much detail but it normally lists how much damage a weapon does and sometimes has extra stats such as speed which increases how quickly you can swing, defense which affects how much damage you take, weight which is basically knockback, how far does the enemy go flying when you hit it, critical chance which is how often you can get a critical strike, and critical power, which basically adds more damage when you do get a critical strike. Now each type of weapon also has a special attack that you can do by right clicking on PC. I'm not sure what the button is for console though because controllers are a foreign object to me. But my guess is whatever button is labeled as check or do action on these controller maps is the button you use. Swords, the classic. This seems to be a lot of people's favorites and I can see why people like it. Easy to use and they normally do a good amount of damage. Not my favorite though, but we'll get to that later. Sword's special attack is the ability to block. For some reason, I'm absolute trash at trying to actually block a monster with this. Daggers! An interesting choice. I find them to be extremely hard to use because you can't swing it, so the enemy needs to be right in front of you for you to actually hit it. Now the dagger actually has a decent special attack. Better than the sword's special attack in my opinion. It does kind of this multiple hit thing, kind of like the hammer. Hammer is my favorite. I actually used to prefer swords back when I played on mobile, but after learning about the amazing glitch you can do with hammers, they've been my favorite ever since. So hammers do a good amount of damage and you can swing it like a sword. However, hammers do seem to be a little bit slower, but the special attack makes up for it. So when you right click, it's kind of like the dagger where it hits the enemy a few times, but if you do this, where when the hammer is doing the special attack, there's spam click the left mouse button or spam click C, and you can do more damage. I remember hearing about this exploit type thing from like a Stardew Valley video a while back. I'm not sure if this works on console. If it does, just comment down below. Boots. I'm not going to talk about boots for too long because they aren't the biggest contributing factor, but they help a bit. Boots normally have a defense and or immunity boost. I'm not going to go into detail, but according to the wiki, defense is a statistic that affects how much damage the player takes. And for immunity, immunity is a statistic that affects your chance to be afflicted with any debuff. Debuffs are stuff like getting slimed or jinxed if you didn't know. Rings. Rings are very helpful when being in any mine. There are a lot of rings though, so I'm gonna just go over a few I find helpful. Sturdy Ring. I really only recommend this for very early game, since all it does is cut the effect of debuffs in half. Also, you can craft it at level 1 combat, so like, craft it early game, use it until you get better rings, and just like, ditch it, I guess. Burglar's Ring. This one is incredible for getting extra loot from monsters. Well, because that's the feature of this ring. Fortunately, you can't get the super early game. It's more of a mid-game item, but whenever you get around to slaying 500 dust sprites, is when you can call this ring yours. Iridium Band. This one is more mid-game again, but the Iridium Band is a must-have. It glows and attracts items, but it also increases your damage by 10%. You can craft this ring at level 9 combat, but if you're lucky enough, you might get it from a fishing treasure chest. There are so many more rings in the game though, so pick whichever ones you think are helpful. I just listed off a few I like. Also, this isn't really significant, but I was looking through the list of rings on the wiki, I found the Topaz ring, which literally does nothing apparently? What is the point then? Alright, on to cooking! You're just straight up not going to survive if you don't bring any foods to the mines. I'm being honest here. Salad. 
Salad is a pretty popular choice for healing health and energy amongst people. It's pretty easy to get your hands on. You can either get the recipe from Emily after getting three hearts with her and cook it with one leek, one dandelion, and one vinegar. Or you can just buy it from Gus. Buy it from Gus, please. Don't waste a bunch of leeks, dandelions, and vinegars. Spicy eel. This dish is incredible for being in any mines. It gives plus one luck and plus one speed. You can either get this recipe from George once you get seven hearts with him, and then cook it with one eel and one hot pepper, or you could buy it from the desert trader for one ruby each. But probably the easiest way to get it is by slaying serpents in the skull cavern. However, the last way does require you to fight more powerful monsters before having extra buffs, so just get it with whichever way you think is the easiest for you. Roots Platter. This one is somewhat easy to get your hands on early game. It gives you plus three attack and you get the recipe from level three combat. You can cook it with one cave carrot and one winter root. All right, this one's a minor 1.5 spoiler, so skip to this timestamp if you don't want to know what this is. Banana Pudding. This one looks delicious and gives plus one luck, plus one mining, and plus one defense. So the buffs aren't that bad. It's still not the best though. You can buy the recipe from the island trader for 30 bone fragments. You can then cook it with one banana, one milk, and one sugar. Magic rock candy. This one is by far the best. It gives plus two mining, plus five luck, plus one speed, plus five defense, and plus five attack. However, it's pretty hard to obtain. You can either buy it from the Desert Trader for three prismatic shards each on Thursdays, you can get one from the museum once you donate 90 items, or you can get it as a very rare drop from Haunted Skulls. Alright, so now you pretty much know what you need to know and have what you need to have to venture into the mines. And if you're enjoying this video so far, feel free to subscribe and like the video. And, and, let's get back to the video. So, let's start with the mine you will come across when starting a new file. The Mines. Kind of a shame, it doesn't have a cool name like Skull Cavern or Volcano Dungeon. The Mines has 120 floors, and every 10 to 20 floors, the theme changes, as well as there being new monsters when the theme changes. Floor 1 through 29 are the Earth Dirt themed floors. The wiki refers to them as Brown Earth, so I'm just gonna go with that. Anyways, there are a handful of monsters you'll encounter. Thankfully, they aren't that strong. Imagine if you encountered a serpent on your first day in the mines. Slimes are the pretty basic monsters you find in the mines. On floors 1 through 29, they are normally green. They can occasionally give you the slime debuff if they hit you. Doggies, these little suckers are super annoying. They live in those hoable spots in the mines. They can burrow through the ground. These things can be somewhat hard to slay early game, so you should probably ignore them or try to lure them out by standing on the ground and quickly moving and then trying to slay them. It's kind of hard to explain, so maybe just ignore them early game. Bugs, basically your best friend when it comes to monsters. As long as you don't stand in their path, they won't take damage on you. You can still slay them though. Rock crabs, these little tricksters! Uh, sorry, I kind of got it carried away there for a second. Anyways, these little things pretend to be rocks. It's so annoying. However, you can normally tell when it's a rock crab when it's one of these pointy rocks and it doesn't really fit into a grid formation, kind of. Other than when they're hiding, they're pretty easy to kill. Grubs. These are a piece of cake late game, but early game, if you don't kill them quickly enough, they mutate into a cave fly. Cave flies fly pretty quickly, so you're going to want to swing your sword sooner than later when they're pretty close to you. One or two of them isn't bad, but you probably don't want to get stuck in a swarm of them, do you? Alright, so moving on to the next set of floors. You are definitely going to want to have a glow ring or a torch to hold, since these floors are dark. Like, literally. Ooh, the wiki calls these the shadow floors, so I'm going to call them that. Bats. They fly at you and can be somewhat annoying, especially in swarms. Like with the cave flies, swing your sword earlier than later when they are close to you so that you can hit them without taking damage. Stone golems. These ones might get on your nerves. They start out as small piles of stone that you might not even be able to see. When you get close to them, they pop up from the ground and chase after you. There are occasionally those bugs, but just like kill them or work around them. Alright, so moving on to floors 40 through 69. <clears throat> new set of floors, new monsters. So, moving on to the ice floors. The monsters do get stronger, so if for some reason you haven't gotten a new sword yet, do it now. 
Once you get to floor 40 in the mines, you can buy a wood mallet from the Adventurer's Guild. And since it's a hammer, you can do the awesome hammer special attack trick. So I definitely recommend that weapon. Frost Jelly, aka Blue Slime. Basically like the green slimes, but does more damage and has more HP. They can also slime you, by the way. Frost Bat. Almost the same case as Frost Jelly, where they're like bats. But these bats do have more health and they do more damage. Dust sprites. Oh, look how cute they are. Wait, they're monsters? Yep, on my first ever playthrough, I thought they were nice. They were not. Anyways, they're actually pretty easy to slice, so don't sweat it. Ghosts. These things can be pretty annoying if you don't have a weapon that deals a lot of damage, since the knockback on them is crazy. Also, if one of them hits you, it teleports pretty far away from you. My advice is try to hit them when they're close, then let them float back to you and just hit it again. Now floors 70 through 79 are still technically ice floors, but the theme is a little bit different, for they are frozen castle floors. They'll have all the monsters from the other ice levels with the addition of skeletons. Skeletons walk pretty slow, however they can't throw bones at you that deal damage if they hit you, so try to get the skeletons out of the way first. The last section of the mines is where it gets intense. Nah, I'm just kidding. Kind of. Anyway, since it's a new section of the mines, the monsters are different and stronger. Oh, and look, the rocks are a different color. Red sludges are basically slimes, but stronger. Yeah, yeah, let's get to the interesting monsters. Lava bats, basically like the other bats. I said, let's get to the interesting ones. Lava crabs, eh, just as infuriating as the rock crabs. Wait for them to peek out, then attack! <sighs> Shadow brute. Now, if you're a sane person and absolutely love Krobus, you might be hesitant to kill these monsters. But just tell yourself, they are not Krobus. And also, they're trying to kill you. So you have to defend yourself somehow. Now, Shadow Brutes have barely any knockback, so you have to be careful when slaying them. Try to hit them and then back away, and then hit them again. Shadow Shamans. These dudes are a bit different than the Brutes. Number one, they have more knockback. Number two, they can hit you with a debuff. The debuff is jinxed, and it lowers your defense by eight for eight seconds. Metalheads. These are one of my personal favorites because they have a chance to drop this epic hat. Anyways, back to the topic. These aren't that hard to slay. They are pretty slow. However, similar to the Shadow Brutes, you can't really knock them back. So take a swing or two, then move, and then repeat. Squid Kids. These, these seem like something out of a... Uh, what's it saying again? Oh yeah, a fever dream. A plus is that they literally only have one HP, but they do shoot fireballs at you, so be careful. So, you are progressing through the levels, and you notice that floors 110 through 119 look different. And I know they do, but they have the same monsters as the other lava floors. So get out there and, uh, uh, eliminate them. I believe in you! The mines was so easy. I want more of a challenge. Something that's actually deadly. Well, random character, I think you're due for the Skull Caverns. <sighs> this doesn't sound good. Once you get to the bottom of the mines, you'll be rewarded with the Skull Key, which unlocks a Junimo cart. Awesome reward, right? Wait, it also unlocks a Skull Cavern? Say what? Sorry, I've been watching too much Amphibia lately. Serpents are kind of the icon of Skull Cavern, and people hate them. If you don't have a great weapon, they are going to be a huge pain. So I recommend having the Galaxy Sword or Hammer. But if you can't get a hold of one of those two, just make sure to have a weapon that you can swing fast and does a fair amount of damage. Since those serpents are quick. My strategy for serpents is to not ignore them when they are around. If a serpent is coming after you, kill it before focusing on anything else because they are really fast and take a lot of damage on you. Now one monster you are literally forced to not worry about is the armored bugs. Unless you have a little something from the update 1.5, you can't kill these bugs. So just don't get in their way and you'll be fine. Purple slimes, they're like the previous slimes except they're a lot stronger and have more health. And these things are everywhere. So either kill the purple slimes quickly or try to weave around them. Also, they do a lot of damage on you. So don't die! Mummies, you might think that when you slay them and they collapse, that you've killed it and you're done. Well, not quite. Definitely make sure you bring bombs or explosive ammo. 
because once you've swung at the mummy enough and it does collapse, place a bomb near it or fire explosive ammo at it to finish it off. If you don't, it will pop back up after a little bit and chase after you again. Carbon Ghosts Carbon ghosts can appear on the same looking floors as the mummies. They move and act like the ghosts from the mines, except, well, obviously, they're stronger. Now, as you'll work your way down, you'll encounter some different monsters. You may occasionally come across a prehistoric floors that have mutant flies, which are pretty easy to kill, but also pepper rexes. These are not as easy to kill because they blow fire at you. A good strategy for these dudes is to kind of stand in front of them, wait until they start blowing fire, then quickly hit them from the side. Once you get to 425 and deeper, you can find <gasps> an iridium node. Wait a second. That's an iridium crab. Iridium crabs are like rock crabs and lava crabs from the normal mines, but even more infuriating because you think you find a node with valuable ore. All right, if you've made it to floor 50, you are, uh, well, you should actually prepare yourself even more for the iridium bat. These little creatures can do so much damage on you if they hit you. And they also have a very high HP, so they take more hits to kill. Make sure you have something to heal with handy because killing these things can sometimes be quite the task. My strategy is like with the serpents, if you're dealing with one, focus on killing it before anything else. Alright, so that's it for combat. Or at least for 1.4. So the next few sections are going to have a lot of 1.5 spoilers, so if you're a mobile player or you just started playing the game and don't want spoilers for endgame stuff yet, skip to this timestamp. Or I guess you could just leave the video. But that'd be kind of mean, don't you think? Alright, we're turning up the heat on this one, literally. Tiger slimes. Like the other slimes, but stronger. But also better because they can drop this hat. Hotheads. Like the metalheads, but when you kill them, they kind of turn into a bomb and destroy nearby rocks. Their explosion also takes damage on you, so run away! But then run back to collect your loot. Magma sprites. These stupid things. They fly at you pretty quickly, and a lot of them can surround you once. I recommend taking care of them like the serpents and the iridium bats, where if you're dealing with one, kill it first. Otherwise, it's just gonna keep taking damage on you, and it's gonna get annoying. But if you thought magma sprites were bad, magma sparkers exist. I hate these things. More than serpents. More than any other monster, I hate these things. They fly at you like the magma sprites, but, but, sometimes they slow down and then go super fast. And they can hit you with the burnt debuff, which lowers your attack and defense, and speed by two for six seconds. So what ends up happening is then it hits you again, and then again, until you can finally escape. But then you normally have to heal a lot. Just to defeat these stupid things quickly, please, please, just get the galaxy hammer and do the hammer attack trick. Dwarfist Sentry. Now there are these weird looking gadget things in the volcano mines. And occasionally one of these little guys will pop out of there and attack! Lava Lurks, kind of like the Volcano Dungeon version of Squid Kids. They float around in the lava and then pop up and shoot fireballs at you. My strategy is wait for them to pop up nearby where I'm standing and just attack it like my life depends on it. Magma Duggies. These would get on my nerves, but there isn't that much of the dirt on the ground for them to spawn in the Volcano Dungeon. So that's a plus. They're still a bit annoying, though. False Magma Cap. These only appear on mushroom floors in the Volcano Dungeon, and they're like rock crabs. One way to tell if a Magma Cap is a Magma Cap or a monster is to see if it has that green plus by it to show that it's a forageable. You've made it throughout the dungeon, and now you've unlocked an incredible tool that will help with the final combat challenges. This thing is incredible! I love it so much! Anyways, let me actually tell you about it. The forge is what you unlock when you reach the top floor of the Volcano Dungeon. It gives you the ability to enchant your weapons, make the best weapon in the game, and combine rings. This. This right here is the reason for living. Well, that was oddly dark. One thing you can do with the forge is combine rings. This is super helpful because then you don't have to worry about wearing one iridium band and only being able to have one special ring. Now you could have three other rings if you wanted to. 
because I'm assuming you are normal and wear at least one Iridium band. Anyways, all you have to do is take two different rings, put them in the forge, and this costs 20 cinder shards, by the way. Then just press this button and you'll have your combined ring. The other use of the forge is where you can forge a weapon. You can take any weapon and forge up to three gems in it. The gems can be the same or different. Each gem gives a different ability. Amethyst gives more knockback, which I honestly don't like that much, but whatever. Aquamarine gives a more critical hit chance. Personally not a fan of this one. Emerald gives more weapon speed, which I actually kind of like, especially for the galaxy hammer. Jade gives critical hit damage, which I guess is okay, but wouldn't be my personal choice. Topaz gives more defense, but like, at this point, you should be able to defend yourself pretty well. Now, Ruby. My favorite. It gives more damage, and a little more damage to the enemies never hurt. Oh, and you can also use a diamond to fill all the remaining forge slots with random upgrades. You can also enchant your weapon by using one precious prismatic shard. Better hope you don't get Haymaker. Artful is a 50% cooldown on the special attack. This one really only is best on the hammers and possibly daggers. Bug Killer makes you do twice as much damage on any monster that is a bug and allows you to kill those armored bugs in Skull Cavern. Crusader makes you do more damage to void spirits, ghosts, skeletons, and mummies. It also prevents mummies from reviving, so that's actually pretty handy. Vampiric gives you the chance to regain health when slaying a monster. It's somewhat rare, but it can give you a good amount of health back. Sometimes. Haymaker. I do not understand why this exists. More fiber is earned when collecting weeds. What? Why would anyone need that? Also drops hay, but like, why? What's the point? Don't keep this enchantment. Just don't. Now there is one more incredibly awesome thing you can do with the forge. And that is to make the infinity weapons. AKA best weapons in the game! What you need for this is your choice of one of the galaxy weapons. <clears throat> hammer. And three galaxy souls. You can obtain galaxy souls from Mr. QI's walnut room, the desert trader. Or they can sometimes drop when you do the danger in the deep quest. Which is something I'm going to cover in just a second. Once you have your materials, head up to the forge and make that ultimate weapon. So, what are you going to do with this new great weapon of yours? I think Mr. QI can help you with that. There are two different quests Mr. QI offers that makes the mines a heck of a lot more deadly. The first one transforms the normal mines. It makes all the enemies a harder version of themselves, and that's just awesome. Floors 1 through 29 now have a blue, almost underwater themed. First off are the slimes. They are stronger, and they wear sunglasses. Dangerous bugs. Basically the same, except they can also fly left to right instead of just up and down. They also do more damage and have more health. Dangerous Dougie. Basically a Dougie, but stronger. Sensing a pattern here. Dangerous Rock Crab. Hides in its rock shell, like normal rock crabs, but has more HP and does more damage. Now, you probably want to see a new monster. And, well, what have we got here? A squid? In the mines? Yep, these are monsters. They're pretty annoying since they come up to you in a really weird movement and can catch you by surprise. You can have a group of squids coming after you, so try to deal with them quickly. Also, I recommend the Galaxy Hammer or Infinity Gavel for all these monsters so that you can do the special attack. Moving on, the dark floors? are still dark, but they look a little different. The bats behave the same way, but they look a heck of a lot cooler. Carbon ghosts, basically like the ones from the Skull Caverns, but in the mines. Dangerous stone golems, they're like the stone golems, but they run faster and have more HP and do more damage. Also, there are a lot more of these than in the normal mines. Floors 41 through 69 used to be ice themed, but now they're forest themed? What? There are plenty of new monsters here, stronger than ever. Dangerous grubs. They aren't little weaklings like the normal grubs. And if you fail to kill in time, they turn into this terrifying wasp looking thing. Aww, look at these cute little mushroom dust sprites. Remember, kill. Frost bats. They actually look more like woolly. Anyways, they fly at you just like the normal bats. Stick bugs. 
These are actually kind of rare, I'm pretty sure. Either that or I've been unlucky and only come across like three in my 500 hours of playing. Anyways, these were kind of like the rock crabs. They look like a normal stick, but then they start walking. Also, these are by far my favorite monster in Stardew Valley. Spiders. There will be a lot of these little things. They jump in kind of confusing patterns and they can jump on you by surprise. I think the hammer combo works best on these because you can hit a lot of them at one time. Putrid Ghosts. These can be really infuriating, but there's actually a little trick that makes the debuff not as bad. Putrid Ghosts send out these little globs and if one hits you, you can get stuck with the nauseated debuff. Now, you might think this is the end of the world because you can't eat anything for two minutes and you're in the hard mode mind. But eating a piece of ginger or drinking a ginger ale will actually kill this debuff. It's amazing, so stock up with ginger and head into the mines confidently. Now, floors 71 through 79 actually do have a nice theme. You can encounter a dangerous skeleton, which are like the normal ones, still throw bones at you, but you can also encounter skeleton mages, which shoot these spells at you and if you get hit you freeze in one place for a few seconds thankfully you can keep swinging your weapon so continue to attack dangerous haunted skulls fly at you very quickly so deal with them sooner than later when one is attacking floors 81 through 119 this is where it gets even more intense wait lava bats those aren't very intense Shadow snipers, on the other hand, they can shoot these things at you and if you get hit your surroundings can go very dark for a few seconds the dangerous lava crab, dangerous metalhead, dangerous shadow brute, and dangerous shadow shamans behave the same way as their not as dangerous counterparts, but of course, more damage and more HP. The dangerous squid kid still shoots fireballs, except they tend to shoot a lot more and quicker. Also, they have sunglasses. We have one cavern left, the Skull Cavern Invasion. This is the hardest combat you will get in Stardew Valley. I mean, you could add Monster Must to make it even harder, but I did a different video on that, so go check that out. So, Skull Cavern Invasion is the other QI quest that changes one of the existing mines. The Carbon Ghosts and Iridium Bats stay the same in the Skull Cavern Invasion, so you don't need to worry about those as much this time. However, they will probably swarm you more often. The Armored Bugs are probably even more armored now, so just don't get in their way. The Dangerous Mummies are like the Mummies, but there are so many more of them. Like, just look at this. This is insanity. Purple slimes have sunglasses now, and big purple slimes are very common in Skull Cavern Invasion. Also, you can find dangerous squid kids in Skull Cavern Invasion. Now, this is the strongest, probably, monster in Skull Cavern. These not so little things can swarm you very easily. And you see how long they are? If any part of them touches you, you get hit. So I recommend having a galaxy hammer or infinity gavel on hand because if these start to swarm you, that hammer combo will definitely knock them out. That's pretty much all I have to say about combat. I seriously hope you enjoyed this video, even though it, it is a bit different from what I normally do. I wanted to try something new, okay? And now, after making this big video, I'm going to unwind. By working on my next big project, 300 Days of Stardew Valley, I, I should probably actually take a legitimate break first.